This is episode number 19 with Connor and Michal from Clean Cut Meals. Welcome to the Doc Fitness Podcast, where it's all about developing your mindset, training, and nutritional knowledge so you can lose body fat and build muscle effectively while still living a real life. I am your host, David O'Connor. Now let's get into the show. How are we keeping guys and a big welcome back to the Doc Fitness Podcast and today is the very first episode where I actually shot a live episode of the podcast with Connor and Michal from Clean Cut Meals here in Galway and with Clean Cut Meals being a healthy meal delivery service for people with like fat loss goals, muscle gain goals, we thought it'd be perfect to dive into everything around kind of meal prep, tasty recipes for fat loss and coming up with the kind of just different different cook ideas that we might have heard of before, different perspectives on foods from people that do this every single day and as well we dive into the story behind how Connor and Mihai got started and kind of where Clean Cut Meals has progressed today as well. So with that we'll be looking at the mistakes people make around food, kind of like go-to cooking methods for fat loss, low calorie sauce ideas, what's the story when it comes to storing certain foods in the fridge and the freezer and kind of just the basic myths behind that which I would have believed in the past as well and like some big even little things like reheating guidelines and other kind of little flavour tips and tricks and cooking methods and takeaways as well which is all kind of interwoven throughout so yeah let's welcome the lads on the show and get started so lads welcome to the podcast Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So today is the first probably live episode I've ever done. Usually we do these over Skype and we have Connor and Michal here in King Cup Meals in Galway. And uh, I am put everyone on the spot. I think Michal's going to answer this one. I put everyone on the spot with this first question and it's in 10 seconds or less. Describe it, what it is you do. Uh, so basically we provide healthy ready-made meals uh, across the nation um, for anyone's different goals, whether it's weight loss, muscle gain or... Uh, just a healthier lifestyle. That's what we provide. Nice. Just on the ten mark. Excellent, excellent. Connor, anything to add to that? No, not really. It's this is exactly what we do. I suppose we're kind of here to make a difference in people's lives, um, not just food wise, but just to be there for them if they have any questions or assistance mm-hmm. with anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can count on us. So that is what Clean Cut Meals is about. Yeah, it's not just a food package, as you said. It's a lifestyle package, really. You know. It's about um, actually helping people to change their lives for the better. But the food is the first step, you know. So Brilliant. Just to change their diet and change their mind. And their, I suppose confidence as well can change from that. So it's just to help people, really. And as we were talking before we started as well, the kind of story behind it, like I suppose I didn't ask you that first when I came, but what, yeah, where, where did it actually start? Back in 2015, wasn't it? It uh, started actually in 20, end of 2013, the idea, I think, okay. going into 2014. I was in San Francisco myself in 2013. Uh, I'd taken a year out of college, and then um, I was working in, she's in a kitchen in town. I've been a chef all my life, and Connor was going over to San Francisco in 2014, but before he left, we spotted, uh, spotted the idea on Instagram. Yeah. Never really thought much of it. Um, I just thought it was a serious business model and there was nothing back here like it. So I went off to San Fran and then I just spotted loads of people outside the gym with their Tupperware um, but from these different meal prep companies. And I said, geez, this will actually do well back home. So mm-hmm. that's when I kind of got on to Hall. like maybe the first two weeks I was there. Hall was like, that's it, I'm quitting my job. Let's just go ahead with it. Uh, let's just do it. So... Um, but before I went over we kind of had a chat about it mm. um, nothing was really kind of put into action we just said that we would go for it but we didn't really kind of take it too seriously so I think we decided one day kind of mm. sitting in the pub yeah we did yes, we, we, had, we had the idea over a pint so we did yeah that's a fact the power of a pint so um, <laughs> but it was more procrastinating on it and sitting on the actual idea uh, of how it came to life then because you had it off and I was at home working in a job that I wasn't really felt so I was appreciated in so I wanted more I knew there was more out there so by that it actually gave me uh, it gave me the drive to go back to college I went back to college to do a level 8 add-on it was in business management and with that came entrepreneurship and you know so we had an idea then and uh, that helped us then go from idea to, to production stage because uh, I went and done a six month uh, graduates graduates entrepreneurship program, and that that really helped us excel because Connor was actually still in college in our first year in Clean Cut Meals in okay. 2015. He was finishing his last year in college, so I was down to part time while doing the part time course and in the kitchen. So it was kind of like balls to the wall kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. we made it work for sure. You know, 
But the idea, yeah, it came from a Me Too, basically. Uh, we just knew there was nothing in the West. We knew there was a company up in Dublin doing it. But we knew, like personally, I knew I had skills in the culinary field. Connor was very enthusiastic for fitness uh, and health at the time. You know, he's been kickboxing his life. Mm. We're both avid gym goers, so we, we always had interest in it. Nutrition comes hand in hand now with the healthy food. Like So uh, the idea, it was basically, it was just, yeah, it just came out of nothing really. Yeah, where where did the where did the food element come? Like you were saying, you're like what were you doing in college back then? I done culinary arts. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I've been a chef yeah. like since I was sixteen. Worked in London, worked in San Francisco, yeah. worked all over Galway. So there's the connection. <laughs> there's a couple of food connection. But in terms of like healthy food, like I was working in a Michelin star restaurant in London, and it wasn't healthy by all means. It was mm. butter and cream, and mm. you know it was tasty as anything. So I tried to bring that concept. I didn't want it to be. Broccoli and rice and chicken and boring, you know, traditional, what people think of when they say, see diet, they think, boring, I'm never going to be able to do it. So I was like, we need to make it restaurant standard, taste, and then that'll help people to get over that. You know? And so it's, it's just about, what, it's, it's, it's like, basically just people to be able to sustain their diet. Yeah. Because when people, we can cook chicken and broccoli, and, mm. but we don't want to do that because we know that it's not sustainable. So we know people fall off it straight away. Mm-hmm. So we did try to keep it as he- like healthy and as nice as possible, mm. just for the customers, just so they can make a lifestyle change themselves. Mm. Like right now, we have eight dishes that change every single week. Like we have no same dish on two weeks in a row, which is pretty impressive, really, yeah. because if we look at our competitors and we think about how we differentiate ourselves. And uh, we don't probably advertise it to the public enough. We talked about this when you came in, mm. and uh, that's one of our main strengths. Is we have a team of chefs up there, you know, with myself and Connor's guidance, and we're changing dishes like every single week. You know, it's a dishes. huge factor. It's massive, and that's huge for sustainability as well. Because yeah. people are like, "Shit, like this is tasty, and these are all different." Mm. Some people need the chicken broccoli and rice. They're going on a cut. They'll do it for twelve weeks, but they're a different level than your average. I'm trying to get healthy. I want to do a six-week uh, commitment. So, you know, you need to keep them interested. Mm. So that's how we find it. It works, you know. So one, probably one of the biggest mistakes you see with the whole meal prep, food side, healthy food side thing is just probably plainness, blandness, step one, yeah? Yeah, and I'm not the right, I suppose, like I, I see our competitors and they're kind of misleading in what they're saying. Uh, a lot of them are kind of, we, like we've done a lot of market research. We've ordered different meal prep companies and the food has come down here and one of the meals I think was over a thousand calories mm. and it was just you could taste but like, market it as a like a low calorie meal mm-hmm. yeah exactly yeah yeah. Wow. yeah. so fuck yeah so we've kind of I suppose that's kind of like a lot of people are being misled by other companies so like me and me all have a background in nutrition mm. so we're quite knowledgeable when it comes to uh, macros, food and calories and, macros and calories you know mm. yeah uh, it kind of it's like in my eyes it's only common sense that should you should have that like you know in a way in course. a way but you have yeah. you actually train yourselves as well yeah like that's uh, that's a big factor it's like it's like um it's like doctors and physios that don't strength train or having a clue about yeah it or, it's but, funny do you know they're, they're, like the old age doctors are funny they mm-hmm. they go on about uh, obesity and type two diabetes and all these things and the majority of them that I've seen are about <laughs> four twenty two stone <laughs> you know and they have probably health issues themselves so yeah. it's we kind of practice what we preach here and we like to think that we are uh, growing with the company as well like we honestly do eat the meals every single day of the week and mm. they're so uh, they're so anti you know we love them um, so we try and practice what we preach yeah and I've, I've had a couple myself through Joyce's and Athenroy lovely yeah um, my parents had a few Oshin sure Oshin had a few oh, on the yeah, gym yeah. as well um, might even take a taste after this we'll yeah, see yeah yeah <laughs> we'll do you a discount <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like, I suppose I want to kind of keep on the track with general mistakes you see the general population making again why you exist in the first place but one being plain food what would be another big massive kind of no brainer mistake people make that you I think like people's decisions and snacking and people's um, I suppose their view on the likes of carbohydrates and mm. there's so many different and diets fats. out there you know what I mean there's so you can go keto you can go like F2 diet there's loads of these diets and they all work but like you need to find what works for you and basically it's simple science it's calories in calories out you know and I heard this years ago and I remember thinking calories in calories out like what's he even talking about like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know what, what is he on about and it's actually that simple you know if you're burning more than you're eating you're gonna lose weight you know 
So I think it's breaking it down to the simplicity. Of, that's why we have our plan structured. We have a plan structured on, uh, I suppose, an average male or female, and we have uh, average calorie intake. And if people need to deviate from that, uh, well, of course we can do so. If we do check-ins, and you, you, like we could have a, a, a 79 kilo female jumping on our weight loss plan, you know, and then we could have a 22 stone male jumping on our weight loss plan, and and we need to be able to guide him and say, listen, you need more calories than mm-hmm. she does yeah. because you're going to go to me. This diet's terrible. I, like I'm starving. It doesn't work. You know, we need to be able to help the customer tailor their calories down week by week until they're at that level. So I think it's uh, I think it's about just honestly it's as simple as just calories in calories out for us you know that's yeah, what we're but you're more around. you're more than a meat carb company then really like we are yeah we're trying to be that's a lifestyle that's unreal like how you're yeah. tailoring the, yeah. the person like. and we will be in, uh, introducing a subscription now yeah. in their yeah. new website so it will be a package yeah. thing you're going to join the family and as such you'll have an account we'll have weekly newsletters going out to you with training tips uh, snack tips you know if you're feeling snack you need to get a snack you're out today you don't know what to eat we'll be giving little tips to our customers that are uh, in our subscription basis and we feel that that will really help them grow as well you know? like a lot of people kind of hop on for a week and jump off so like a lot of people think that change is going to be made over a week so we're really trying to just knit, like drill it into people's head that it's a lifestyle Yeah, you know you have to give yourself at least six weeks just to see your body change mm-hmm. of course yeah. and you know, then same as the gym you yeah. see yourself you might have someone coming in in January for the first two weeks actually this isn't for me Look, I'm not. I didn't lose any weight in two weeks. Mm-hmm. But like, you can't. You, you have to give. And then they're and then they're annoyed at the service. Mm-hmm. So you really kind of, you know, it, it is a lifestyle, and you do have to make a commitment. So mm-hmm. that's the route we're going down. We're not just here to take your money. We mm-hmm. really want to see uh, change. a lifestyle change, yeah. change in your life, change in your mood. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's what the route we're going down. Yeah. Really nice. No, brilliant. Yeah, I would like to, the fact that you're educating people behind that, like no more than what we do. Mm-hmm. That's a huge part of like it's just general education, the content people put out there. You know, of course, because I like, I don't see me prep companies giving that sort of level of education. Like, mm-hmm. So no, fair play. Yeah, um, I actually didn't know all that. Like to be honest, then where like where did you first start? Like where did you first start making the meals and getting them out then? Or did it start here where we're sitting today? Or did it start well, at I home? suppose we started at home and um, just cooking up a few meals for ourselves. Uh, two of our mates would be like, "Jesus, you might, might you might make me a few, you know, I'll throw you a few pound." Like it was an idea that we had, but we still were prepping meals. And then for like, let's say presentations and stuff, when we actually had to pitch to people to see, like, would the idea float? Uh, we'd make them at home, you know. Mm. And we look back at pictures now that we have from our first post, and it's like at the time we're like, "This is unbelievable!" Like we've got like two hundred likes. Looking at it now, you're like, "Wow, that's pathetic!" Like we've come <laughs> so far, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but it started at home, and then like within six months, we secured this facility where we are now, which was amazing. It was everything we needed. Brilliant. And I remember that I remember the day when me and Connor came in here with the keys, and it was probably about six a.m. And we just looked at each other and we said, "What? What are we doing? Like we own, we we're here. Like we've just signed the lease for the foreseeable future, and what are we doing? We don't know what we're doing." <laughs> <really, laughs> <like, really, laughs> What are we getting ourselves into? Big kitchen that we didn't know what to do with. Yeah, an absolutely. office we hadn't a clue. The two of us just running around like. Yeah. We made it work. It was a, it's a, it's 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 come so far in fairness and it's great like. And what kind of like machine did you have to get like bits and stuff like that installed in? Was it already here? Or? No, at the start the kitchen was pretty equipped. It was just uh, in terms of um, pots and pans and like gastronomes. You see, it would have been a facility used for a high volume of cooking. So we came in here and we had, our first week we had 27 customers. So if you can imagine, if you're making a curry for 250 or 27, the size of the pot's going to differ bigly, so Mm -hmm. greatly, sorry, excuse me. Uh, So we had huge bits of equipment and I was cooking small quantities and it was like, it was so tough, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stuff was burning. I was constantly running back to the the sink to wash it, to reuse it, because I didn't have enough and I didn't foresee that. I thought, ah, let's walk in the park. I've been a chef all my life. You know, I'm well able to do this. But realistically, I was in there for 12 plus hours for those 27 customers and we still didn't have the food out on mm-hmm. time by the time we people brought t- the time we designated the customer we were like come yeah. up with three and we're done yeah. and I was super confident I'm not joking it must have been about four no it was five or six was it? five or six you know people. we were sending people away and they were coming back you know it was it was a disaster <laughs> but it was a serious like kick up the arse and lesson like you know you need to get prepared yeah, you know? yeah. that's all lessons like mm-hmm. I'm sure you've, you've known that today don't you and for people like at home in terms of meal prep then as well like what would be the biggest kind of tools you're, you're thinking for people like what's like no better stuff they need to have if they're meal prepping as well or themselves at home if it's a busy day or that kind of stuff like well like I suppose our menu is actually quite accessible 
you know, we have ingredient lists on our menu as well, so mm. people could actually reference our menu to cook at home. Uh, I think it's right. about the time that people are saving, which is which is our, what benefits them from our service. Like, uh, no brainers at home, obviously, or like you, you want to keep your frying to a minimum. You know, you want to bake as much as possible, right. get as much vegetables in as you can. You want to get your fibrous vegetables to bulk out your meals. You know, the more vegetables you eat, the less calories you're going to consume. You know, your green vegetables, any even your roast vegetables, your carrots might be higher calorie, obviously, because the sugar content, but. It's it's still you'd rather bulk it out with vegetables if you can. So of course, more yeah. vegetables in your meals. You know you're looking for maybe the, 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 what people say is the fist of protein, the the, the yeah. half fist carb, fist of vegetables. But don't that's, be don't be scared of fat as well. Yeah, it's as, it's as simple as that. And then and then that's it. Your 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 good fats. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. be scared of your good fats. Obviously, you're not going to go for your kettle crisps. But like, let's get the avocado in and the eggs in the morning. It's like start the, start the the metabolism up and like try and lose that fat, the excess fat, then straight away. Use your fat as an energy source, you know, keep carbohydrates minimum in the morning. That's what we like to do personally. Mm. And uh, run off fats as much as possible in the morning. And then towards the evening, if you have a, another session, if you're playing GEA or hurling, you know, you need your carbohydrates to, for fuel. But of course, yeah. Everyone's different, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different goals. Everyone has a different regime. And, you know, a goal rate for somebody might be way off for somebody else, you know. So there's, yeah. everyone's quite different. Are you a big fan of slow cookers and that kind of stuff? Slow cookers, no. We don't use slow cookers. You wouldn't we, use them here. Like we, yeah. we do slow cook some stuff. We had beef brisket. We slow cooked. We use pork shoulder. We slow cook them. The reason for the pork shoulder is because it's it's actually quite high fat. But when you render it down over a 12-hour period, you'd lose quite a lot of fat. But the yeah. meat would stay quite moist. Uh, it'll be something we'll be doing in the new facility because we've got new equipment. And it'll, re- it'll be way easier mm. in here. It was, it's just not as not that it wasn't as easy. So it's different though from a meal prep company perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. No. from the restaurant absolutely you know we'd slow cook loads of sous vide stuff like it's amazing yeah and yeah it's great right. yeah and yeah flavor wise it's probably a massive topic for people as well like because you know yourself even if you did have a plain dish like chicken or broccoli and, and rice for example mm. we'll use that one again like what could you even do to make that dish even more exciting like, I know it's basic in our heads but I suppose but like we, we do a lot of kind of healthy curries healthy Chris, sauces yeah, here sauces, yeah. like I know myself like I've been I used to eat plain food the whole time and it just wasn't sustainable and just the difference that a little bit of tomato sauce or a little bit of a um, little bit of curry over the chicken or mm. over the rice or whatever makes a huge difference so that's what we do anyways to kind of like, combat I suppose the I suppose just the boring food we try to sauce as much as possible and we make our sauce in house and as well as that like our vegetables we try and keep them as funky as possible it's quite tough at times like uh, in the restaurant as I'll go back to it again you can do loads of stuff you could have melted butter and toasted almonds you could use some bacon mm. as a garnish with the vegetables but we try and keep it as clean as possible so the sauce is really key for us but then the carbohydrates like how can you get your rice from a bland basmati rice to something flavorful like you just put a small bit of stock you can use a small bit of like turmeric in while you're cooking. That's what I do. Uh, you can add some mixed vegetables to make it a savory rice. You know, uh, the simple like simple tricks. You can throw in some. Uh, you could throw in some raisins, some seeds, some nuts into a whole grain rice and make a cold rice salad. Like that's, it's gonna taste great as well. There's loads of variations you can do with rice rather than just plain boiled rice. You know, or yeah. if, if you just prepare your water even before you do the rice with a small bit of stock, turmeric, whatever herbs and spice you want, it will actually infuse the rice and give it more flavor. And then for your meats, like it's how you cook your meat. Can you marinate it? Do you have time to marinate it? Um, how it's cooked? You know, if you are going to fry it, I'd always say small bit of coconut oil to seal it and then pop it into the oven just to keep that moisture because yeah. if it goes straight into the oven, you'll see it'll leak quite a lot. <coughs> and then it goes back to what kind of produce you are using. You've got, if you like some of the chicken breasts you might get out there, you think it's a great deal, like whatever, eight for a tenner, but they're coming from Denmark and they're full of water. And by the time you've cooked them, they're less than 100 grams. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Uh, keep an eye on that as well if you can so stock is a big one you mentioned there yeah you can use stock I wouldn't go too high on the stock it's quite high sto- sodium but it does do um, it does do wonders in the, in the flavour like yeah I've been uh, using it a lot more lately myself mm, now couscous as well like if you uh, if you're soaking your couscous definitely I'd advise okay. you on the stock and like making your own stock then you can you can actually you can see how much salt is going in there and to be honest there's not that much like if you can make your own chicken stock or vegetable stock you can freeze it in freezer bags. Mm. You can actually put it into ice cube trays, which is a great one. Make yeah. your stock stick into ice cube trays and use those little cubes then as a stock cube, you know, when you're cooking because it's going to freeze in your ice cube tray. Any basic style recipe for making a stock? A stock, like it depends what you're going to use. If you want a vegetable stock, it's your root vegetables, really. You know, you want to just cover it with water and just keep an eye on it, keep reducing it, keep reducing it. The, the more you reduce, the more flavor you're going to get out of it. You know, you want to... Uh, you want to um, 
you want to render off any of the badness that will come to the surface you know you can use a spoon to take it off and just keep refreshing it with a small bit of water until you have it satisfied just taste as well you know what I mean but mm-hmm. mainly your root vegetables because if you're not using root vegetables uh, they'll just most of it will turn to mush and you do that with a soup you know so you want to keep them as whole as possible so they'll hold together uh, so what, you're, what, are you, what are you doing to you you know, boil them you, yeah you, well you'd simmer yeah you'd simmer you wouldn't really want to boil you boil them with a, it'd make the vegetables fall apart as well but if you can simmer it Use your like a half an onion, you know your your carrots that are whole. You wouldn't even need to peel them and just let it simmer. And you you just have to keep tasting it and reducing it and tasting it and reducing it. Okay. Add in bay leaves, you know you can add in some thyme, you can add in some rosemary for extra flavour. There's loads of different stuff. Then you just literally pour it out at the end. Exactly, you just strain oh, right. it out. Yeah, cool it down. Brilliant. Never even knew that. We talked a bit about the local sauces, lads. Mm. Um, yeah, I suppose instead of a local path, because that's going to be the main people that are listening to this, like in wanting to get slow, local, even sausages as well. Like, with mm-hmm. any go to main ones you like to use or that are popular? Which, like, just to from our. From I, mean, our you, I know you, you, while you were chatting there, you were saying, like, even throwing a bit of tomato, like, even tomato mm-hmm. paste or chopped mm-hmm. tomatoes or something like mm-hmm. that. And even ones yeah. like that, like. Yeah. Well, I suppose, like, like, are you talking about, like, what, what the chefs cook or what we use personally? Bit of both, like, bit of both. I suppose, like, I personally love what the, the sauce up in the kitchen because they're just, it's like, yeah, uh, it's, it's just so tasty, mm. you know. But if it was a quick fix, like sriracha or mm. Frank's hot sauce, hot yeah. sauce are a go to, for yeah. sure. They like, get some flavour and it's yeah. just, it's zero calorie basically. There's nothing in it but chilies. Mm. You know, our sauces would be low calorie. Um, there still would be calories in them, obviously, because your tomatoes are, of course, you've got sugar content in them too, but it will be as clean as possible. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's not accessible at home. Like, are you going to realistically cook up a batch of sauce just for your chicken? Sometimes that's not accessible. It's not attainable. But I would say if you are doing sauces, break it down to as less ingredients as possible, you know what I mean, while keeping the flavour. And if, you, if you're doing a sauce, make it in the batch. Like, you know, do it for four days, five days, freeze it. You can always freeze sauces, you know, break it down in small portions and defrost as you need. You know, if you're going to do... A, uh, a tomato sauce let's say you're making a, a, just a traditional tomato sauce for your pasta and you're going to do it for one portion why not do it for six portions mm-hmm. it takes the exact same amount of time and then it'll save you time in the future you know? yeah. so yeah. Uh, that might be that, that's probably helpful like when I was doing my own meal prep I would always cook for four days at a yeah. time regardless of what I was doing if it was a sauce it was a curry if it was anything I would always cook for in advance because you're saving yourself time and it takes a little bit longer obviously if you're doing six or one just for the preparation side of things but in the long run, how much does it save you over the next four days? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I know it's it is really no brainer when you make that switch to make mm. one portion of the six or four, yeah. my, myself included. But mm-hmm. even choose, you know, for example, like I wanted to get meal prep done yesterday, I just didn't. The day just got away from me again, mm-hmm. like you know, it's gone Sunday, and so it's it's easier said than done at times. I know, but um, just on the topic of freezing it and, and putting it in the fridge, I always hear over the years, like I've heard from different chefs that like things like rice you can't put rice longer than two days in the fridge all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff like, mm-hmm. what's the truth behind that honestly that's absolute nonsense like we have uh, rice that goes out for five days and okay. it's fine uh, when you're in a restaurant it's quite different the containers we use at the moment are tamper proof so there's no air no way, no air in no air out mm-hmm. we quite we fill them quite high so there's literally nothing else but the food in there like we've done shelf life testing in CLS in Galway here it's microbiological testing so we do have validity for actually plus five days and um, yes. okay, great. But when you're in a restaurant, it might be stored in a Tupperware container. Tupperware. The lid isn't on properly. You know what I mean? It's completely exposed. The container is one quarter full. There's loads of air in there. That's when uh, bacteria will start to grow. That's it. Is, is, if it's left to air, that's when it leaks out. Okay. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and I, I've never. Packs, like, we used to vacuum pack the food, and that would give you about ten days shelf oh, because okay. there's literally no air inside. It cannot. Nothing can grow in nowhere. Mm. You know. Yeah, because I like even there. You know, last week it was Tuesday. I did a slow cook recipe. It was, I got four meals out of it. And today I had the last one last night. Mm. Last that six days old. Mm. Yeah, um, but it felt like it was when I was slow cooker. It was, it was that nice, like because yeah. because the the Tupperware I'm using is sealed. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good solid. That would like. definitely make a difference. Yeah, rather than just doing a bit of cling on a plate into the fridge, you know. Yeah, you know, invest in a bit of Tupperware if you're going to do the meal prep at home. Like, and if you are putting cling film on a plate with dinner in the fridge, you're talking really probably. A day, well, a you could yeah. get two, maybe three days out of it. It just depends, and like, it just really depends how, yeah. how efficient you've done it and what your fridge is like too. But like, what's an investment in Tupperware really in the long scheme of things? Like, let's think about bigger picture, not short term wins. Like, oh, I'm gonna lose or short term losses. Excuse me, I'm gonna lose twenty quid in this Tupperware. Well, you're not really because it's gonna save you so much time. Like, time is money, really. You know what I mean? 
course, of course. Um, and I suppose that's a, that rice example I gave you. That applies to like onions and all that other stuff as well. That you hear it depends, on. to Does be it? fair. Yeah, we had to do lots of testing, trial and testing with different vegetables and how they're cooked. You know, okay. if something's overcooked, it's not going to last for the five days. So we need to be really careful how we cook things because we have to be considerate that the customer is going to get it and they'll have to reheat it as well. So if it is overcooked, it could go to absolute mush. We need to keep it consistent. So we have like standard operation procedures where we go through when we're doing recipes, we have recipes written. Everybody knows this is how it's done, so like it's kind of it's gone that um, efficient at the moment where it's consistent. People are always getting the consistent stuff. Lots of trial and error. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would find that everywhere, I suppose. It's it's it's. it's but you've got that through actual testing. Yes, yeah. through actual testing. Like we have to get the testing done if we're going to tell people they have this shelf life. Um, we literally wouldn't be able to operate if we didn't get the testing done. Like the EHO. They check on us frequently, and we're completely up to standard with them. Mm-hmm. You know, so right. that's great to have as well. You know, we we're not trying to bullshit any customers. We're we're literally of course, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what a good rule of thumb, even for my own head, you know, for example, or someone at home, or even if you're doing your own, bring your own food home, would you have a like if it goes past three days, you probably freeze it. Um, well, after four days, yeah. you kind of say freeze the last day yeah. or two days because a lot of people don't. Friday's kind of, I don't know, like even mm-hmm. if you ask to go for lunch dinner during the week, you're still missing out one meal. So yeah. we always do say, just just freeze two, two or three meals just so you're not missing out really. Yeah. So by the time Saturday or Sunday comes when I take it out of the freezer and it's frost or if you put it straight into the microwave like my housemate does for eight minutes, like you literally, you're, it's, like, <laughs> it's like you're literally tasting it like, like it's a Monday delivery. So it is quite fresh after you take it out from, from, the, from the freezer, so... Yeah, they hold well. The containers are great, you know what I mean? The containers, as I said again, there's no air in there out, so mm-hmm. it's not like they're going to get... Uh, you, you can actually get frostbite in food if it's not sealed properly. Right. And that'll take away from the taste massively, you know, and it takes away from the value. Like, obviously, freezing is going to deteriorate the quality to an extent, but you have to expect that when you freeze anything, you know? So yeah. it's not as fresh, but it's pretty fresh, you know what I mean? So random tangent as well. Do you know when you're freezing berries and stuff, or you buy packets, mm. or if you bought pre-frozen packets mm-hmm. of berries mm-hmm. look at the bags always left open like, yeah. and throw it back in are you better off trying to see that no it's okay the berries and like even vegetables are pretty good uh, they are probably dry ice frozen on a factory so they're picked washed and froze within I'd say a couple of hours so their nutrient yeah. value is super high you know mm-hmm. they're going to have really high so I would actually I don't think there's anything wrong with frozen berries no, and uh, frozen vegetables. I think they're actually really, really yeah. beneficial. No, I never have either, and I think there's a big dogma around it too, like they're bad. They're yeah, not good or whatever. no, I really disagree with that. Yeah, uh, but I'm looking at the microwave here in the corner as well. What's yeah. your, yeah, reheating food, that kind of stuff? There's a lot of myths around that mm. too, like microwaves are bad. Do you know all these blanket statements? Like, but um, mm-hmm. reheating, is there any common guidelines or well, like, sensible ones? Mm, you have around? Obviously, try and undercook rather than overcook when you're starting to overcook food that's when you're losing the nutritional value okay. like we always undercook in the kitchen because as I said we have to take into consideration the customer's going to recook so all of our some of our vegetables will actually go out semi raw because we know okay. the customer's going to have to cook them for 2 maybe 3 minutes in the microwave or else 10 to 15 in the oven so then the day you'll get the fresh snap from the broccoli, from the peas, you know what I mean? The roast peppers will be roasted by the end of it. Okay. They won't turn too much. So once you start to overcook food, that is when you're using, losing your nutritional value, whether it's vegetables, whether it's uh, proteins, you know, you're just taking all the moisture and the goodness out of it, you know. And like for the likes of broccoli, steamed broccoli, you want to honestly steam broccoli for literally two minutes. You want to have it nearly raw, just hot raw. Really? You know, once it starts to go mushy, that's when you're losing all your good vitamins from the broccoli. Mm. You know, so. that's why my meal prep is shit. <laughs> yeah, I used, to, <laughs> I used to be boiling, I boil veg, not even steam, I just boil a big huge pot of veg and it'd just literally be like fucking soup. soup. <laughs> <laughs> or the chicken going dry. Yeah. yeah. And that's a big one. Like, um, yeah, have you any, have, like, simple, one thing that I changed with cooking chicken, I used to roast it, right? Mm. And I used to put, like, yeah, I don't know where I got it from, probably followed someone that said it. But put a layer, this is years ago, put a layer of tin foil on top. Mm. Just trying to keep in the moisture, yes. the moisture trying to be fancy with it, and put a few spices on top. Mm. Um, that was like one way I used to do it, and I realized it was still way too dry. Yeah, it, wor- it um, works to an extent. You're basically steaming, you're basically steaming the chicken there because you're creating a lid yeah. on your on your uh, let's say oven tray. So any heat that's going to come from the or moisture from the chicken was going to rise as you know as it does, and it'll drop back down as steam. So it will keep it moist to an extent. 
But then it's uh, you, you got to go with cooking times as well. Maybe it was overcooked in, in terms of cooking oh, time. But I would always say if you're going to do like whole fillets, um, to seal them first if you can. Yeah. Seal Sometimes it's handy doing them. I only do them all these as if there's literally 10 people in the house who are cooking a huge meal for someone or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, uh, but stocks just change the game with that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's game changer. Even sure. any stock really. Like, it doesn't yeah. have to be fucking chicken stock. No. Or, I love putting beef in with chicken. Mm-hmm. Beef stock in with chicken. like mm-hmm. um, That kind of stuff. But we, we, we talked about veggies there as well. Like, so... Under, don't cook don't cook the bag out of them basically no definitely not um, have you any like tasty go to recipe for sprucing up veggies I know we talked about hot sauce yeah and stir fries are great you know stir you can add in yeah. stir fries and take it back to the where the stir fries like originate and like try let's go Thai and ginger lemongrass chilli you know what I mean garlic if you make nice. up a little mix of that we usually have a bottle made up where we chop up your chilli garlic lemongrass ginger and just infuse it with oil you know and you can put a spoon of that at the very start and then just start sauteing your vegetables and keep them as undercooked as possible. Stir fries as well, you'll see. Honestly, like, I know people myself, I'm not going to name names, that when they're cooking, uh, they'll just stick it all into the pan at the start. No season, no salt, no pepper, no garlic. And the vegetables will literally boil in the wok. You know what I mean? A stir fry, one, you want to have something hot, hot pan, small bit of oil, and fresh. It needs to be crunchy. You okay. know? And that'll really help. It'll help the flavour. You know, because you're, you're maximising the flavour from the vegetable as its origin. You're chopping, and as soon as it's chopped, it's going into a fresh pan, and it's it's no longer than five minutes in there. It's coming out, and you're tasting everything from it. So stir fry everything. I love stir fry broccoli with almonds. You know what I mean. I like stir frying green beans with a small bit of bacon. You know what I mean. Yeah. It's little flavor hacks as well. So if you can, the fat from the bacon would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Too, you can yeah. do quite a lot. Roasting vegetables, different herbs you use, but always seasoning and garlic is seasoning and garlic is huge. You know, it's massive. Season, season, season is is the term that they use in the culinary division. Like anything that you taste, you. You're nearly going to have to season it again. You might taste the end season it again, you know, just to bring flavour out and elevate it. And have you ever, I know it's probably a random question, but have you ever looked at, do you know when you put oil in a pan mm-hmm. and you cook something in it? Have mm-hmm. you ever looked at, let's just say I put a tablespoon of oil in, mm-hmm. how much of that oil is actually consumed with a person? Have you ever seen anything to that? Or? No, what would you, usually. What would you put a guess on it? Like? Yeah, you usually go with the tablespoon is going to be consumed because you're cooking yeah. most of it, you know what I mean? And I think 10 mils of olive oil, geez, you might be not too sure what it is, but. Uh, it's 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 high enough mm. uh, calories. Oh, cal- like hundred nineteen. Yeah. Or something like that, yeah. But it's um, it's it, olive oil is quite a good fat too to get into. You know, you Absolutely. need your fats yeah. as well. It's, it's a lot different than deep frying in, in sunflower oil. Of course, of course. Yeah. But I suppose that, yeah, if if you're in a fat loss stage, you might as well just count it as oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I definitely would. Definitely makes sense. It. Yeah, but that's that's when you could go to avocado oil. You could go to coconut oil as well. You can use alternatives in olive oil. See if you can get it. Um, even the local sprays aren't too bad. You know what I mean? They're yeah. quite low calorie too. Yeah, we use a lot in all the clients. It's just mm. easy, like it's yeah, just easy, easy to have the top process of exactly shit. There's a hundred calories of oil coming yeah, in here. Yeah, exactly. But I know you're compromising on taste, mm-hmm. um, but there's the trade-offs for fat loss sometimes too. At the same time, absolutely. Um, Connor, any go to veggie ideas for yourself? No, other I'd, than the stir fry. No, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I, I love the stir fries as well. Yeah, so, veggies. Something, with, <laughs> something with a bit of taste in it anyway. Garlic and ginger and just. Some, you know, just throw it in with whatever, like just chop mm. up a bit of broccoli and sugar peas or, or whatnot. So that's kind of my go to vegetables, anyways. When you're in a garlic, you're in a crush or you cloves. Can crush or your, either sliced cloves or, or chopped, you know what I mean? Or even if you get the dry stuff, the dry stuff as well, you want to watch that. It's very high sodium as well. So that's going to help with your water retention in terms of it, depending on how much you use. Yeah. But like vegetables are, are funny. You can change your vegetables complexly by how you cook it, you know what I mean? Uh, a blanched piece of cauliflower might be seriously untasty, like untasty to somebody and they think, geez, I hate cauliflower, it stinks. But I can guarantee you if I roasted it with some almonds and made a puree out of it, you'd lick it off the spoon. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You can change the flavor by changing the cooking technique, yeah. even from roasted broccoli to blanched broccoli. It's completely different. If you get a small little bit of singe on the, the florets and the broccoli, it'll change it drastically. Yeah. So it'd be, it is good to change up how you do your vegetables as well. And like, from your greens, even like asparagus, you know, you could wrap a small bit of pastrami around your asparagus and roast it. That'll help the, the fat from the pastrami, or let's just say um, any kind, even even streaky bacon you could use. Mm. That'll help to, 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 to give the the asparagus a small bit of fat to cook, and it'll really change the, the way it tastes completely. Yeah. You know? Because I, I think as well, like, like the amount of people, like the amount of our clients that they don't talk to people like yourselves, mm. so they don't have a clue how to cook, so they might have had broccoli in the past, they hate it. Yes. 
or they were brought up in it as a kid and they fucking hated it. Of course, yeah. But they've never tried it a different way, so no, it's no, common no. sense, like you know. Mm. But you have to fucking try it. Like. Yeah, you have to absolutely. Um, and look, guys, so that's why that's why you're here too, and that's why you have so much variety. It's, mm. pro- it's proven that point. Exactly, we try um, to be as varied as possible, you know. And I'm just going to transition now into just a few random questions we were getting in for clients, even for myself as well. Like, but um. One of them, I've probably already answered this, but this is a, a better phrase, it's the best way I can. So, like, obviously, if you have a fat loss plan and a muscle gain plan on your website, right? If it was the same rest of you, what are the biggest changes you'd make? The biggest changes we'd make? I know, I, know, I know the biggest changes are calorie-wise, but even for people to hear it, oh, if someone heard, like, a muscle gain meal, mm. if they do the opposite of that or reduce that, it's a fat loss meal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So just even the, the basic common sense type points. Well, the two plans anyway is what we always say to the customer when they're ordering a fat loss plan that it's straight away it's going to put you in a calorie deficit. Mm. So, like, straight away, if you're on that even for a week and you're eating consistently and you're not picking out on snacks, you're definitely going to lose weight. Uh, the Lean Muscle Builder plan, it's more aimed at uh, the, a really active gym goer that kind of needs is carbohydrates and protein. Mm. Uh, but that's how we kind of differentiate the two plans. Um, obviously, the fat loss plan comes with a breakfast snack, or breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then the muscle plan will come with three main meals a day. So there's a big differentiation in the two of them. Mm, like all the meals are geared actually towards fat loss. Like all of mm. our meals are actually low calorie. Even our bulking meals that we brand as bulking are still quite low for a bulking meal. Like they'd be seven, 750 max. Yeah. Know? So we would always have a standard plan as I was going back to the start because yeah. if we actually went for a 4,000K bulk, we're going to charge the customer up to 200 euro a week, which is not attainable for some mm. people. So we'd like to give them uh, maybe, we, we always go for like two or three meals anyways. And then from that, they can deviate. Okay, if I supplement in my oats in the morning, I'm going to get 350 extra calories here. Mm-hmm. If I have two protein shakes in the, during the day, that's an extra 700 calories. So I'm already I'm up on my bulk with three meals. Yeah. So they're not spending an arm and a leg. We can help them and advise them. And like Connor said, the main yeah. difference is between it is the calories to an extent. Of course, but like we everyone have, different. Everyone different. What weight they are, what goals they yeah. have. Obviously, yeah. we're checking in as well with the customer. So mm-hmm. you know, if uh, if we find out that a male. You know, it, it's not really sustainable for them. Like we always like advise them to go for an extra meal a day mm-hmm. or go for a six day, mm-hmm. etc. And then the same goes with the lean muscle builder plan. If someone it's not enough food for them or they're putting on too much weight, we always like compromise with like taking mm-hmm. carbs out of one meal or just taking a meal away from the plan. So mm-hmm. it is all kind of trial and error for the person. But uh, that's what the check ins are kind of you know they're vital for us really because a lot of customers they wouldn't tell you what they wanted yeah. so or what they needed exactly they just kind of just say they try one week fit and they go oh, do you know what doesn't work for me doesn't work for me but it's the wrong plan it's the wrong you plan know? yeah but it's not it's just it's just about kind of tailoring it down to yourself exactly with these calls like we kind of we really get a lot of information off the customer and, and how they're finding it so uh, that's why we're, we're really open to kind of like you know get the customers give us a call if they need it and mm-hmm. that's uh, brilliant yeah. Yeah. Well, the subscriptions will have big time with mm-hmm. that as well because it'll be more of a community and we want to actually, uh, like, we want to, we want people to, to, to reach out to us while we reach out to them to, to help them to reach their goals. We don't want to just be in the office doing our admin work and they're just eating the meals and things are going okay. We want to help them excel, you know. We really want to be there and guide them. And as I said, as Connor was saying, sorry, if it, if, if it needs to be to reduce a meal or let's, let's just take carbs out of one meal and you can have two carb meals or anything, you know, we can include a breakfast or a snack or a mm-hmm. sixth day, you know, we're definitely here to help them between the two of us we'll, we'll make it work like yeah a lot of people too though they like they become to you without having a coach in the background or yes. for themselves so they wouldn't have a clue like no they wouldn't so that's and a lot of people would buy as Connor was saying and they'd just go like straight away oh I need weight loss and so I'm going to go for the weight loss plan mm-hmm. and like realistically that might not be the right plan for them you know are you active or are you, you're, of if course you're, yeah. if you're super active then you, you need more than the weight loss we're going to get you three meals a day because you're going to need it to fuel your body the last thing you want to do is mm-hmm. become completely laggy throughout the day, grumpy, no energy, can't actually go to the gym, and then physically not rebuild your muscles. You know. So you give them, you're giving them proper guidelines on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, okay, brilliant. And yeah, we answered. I think we answered some of these already. So I'm just going to fire the matching. Whoever wants to answer them can answer them. Um, favorite recipes. I like I like the chicken fajitas anyway. Mm. I like that, or else the. Chili and carne, I'm a simple man, really. Mm, I love Thai, Thai, everything Thai. I love noodles, I love lemongrass, ginger, chili. I love, yeah, just Thai food, does it for me? Chicken, I'm a chicken man, that's it. <laughs> the, the, is it bean sprouts? 
Yeah, beef sprouts. Yeah, they don't believe unreal. Yeah. Love them. Yeah, love them. Your fajita recipe. What's what kind of calorie ranges are we talking? Oh, your top well, under five hundred calories. Mm. Like we do it in house here, so that's nice. why that's where I fell in love with it. Really, that's very low. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, you'd have your basmati rice there with, with you know with just your normal fajita mix there, and then with it. Chicken or beef. Season, chicken yeah. or beef, which is with a little bit of Greek yog- yog- yogurt over it. So, yeah. Um, like, like instead of sour cream, that's what you're saying. We're using Greek yogurt, yeah. small fat free Greek yogurt, a bit of lemon juice. Honestly, that's a little good tip for anyone that's buying sour cream or cream, creme fraiche. Like, that shit is so high calorie. And honestly, if you just squeeze a little bit of lime or lemon into a bit of Greek yogurt, oh, you okay. would never, ever. As a difference. Kind of creamy substitute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put over the top, lace over the top. Something's a little bit too spicy, use your yogurt to cool it down, you know. You can stick a bit of cucumber in there and a bit of mint and it turns into like a an Indian raita, you know, that oh, you use yeah. with the, the, the spicy food. Yeah, because I heard before, I don't know where I heard it, but like olive oil and lemon are like a chef's best friends in a way for yeah, changing yeah, meals. Yeah, yeah. lemon's amazing. It's great. Because you, you can put lemon in early, yeah, like, can't you? Yeah, you can, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing that people just don't put, really buy enough of is lemon and lime just to have in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Well, buy it for the corona, but <laughs> Try it for the food, it works as well. Like, we're all guilty I'm saying that. that because the last I bought it was for the lads. Yeah, we over yeah. a few beers. Like, <laughs> we're all guilty. <laughs> you use them all your lives on the weekend. Yeah. Nothing left for your meal friend. <laughs> um, lads, I've everything I've actually covered. We've actually covered it throughout the session, which is brilliant. Like, but if you is there anything you feel I've missed, like you're like that, or no, not at all, really. Like, if anyone really wants to reach out, by all means, pop us an email to info at cleancutmeals.e or get on the website and have a look. We will be launching a new website in possibly about two weeks' time. And we did say it's it's going to be a subscription model. Like, we want to help the person throughout Brilliant. as a lifestyle change. Obviously, know? there's no there's no contracts there. No. Anyone can opt out, but it's just kind of saved the customer hassle of logging into their account every week in yeah. person. You know, it's, it's, much, it's much more attainable just to kind of have your meals that will show up at your door every week. Yeah. And if you know if you know you're going on holidays, you can just hop online and just cancel it. Exactly, you cancel or pause at any time. So yeah, I don't know. Other than that, it's been a pleasure. Like, I, just um, one thing I want to ask you as well is the so you have the low calorie meals mm. options. You've like it'd be five day options. You've six we have seven we have we have we're like five days is our standard Monday to Friday. But a lot of our customers will actually want to do it six and seven days. Mm. Um, you see, the the reasoning behind the five day was again just for cost. The work week as well. Like yeah, and the work week. And when we did start, we were actually just post recession, and it was like, let's keep the price as low as possible. So we have a lot of customers that offer six, seven day, and we can definitely fulfill that with the new subscription model. You will actually be able to choose frequency of days and frequency of meals oh, nice. with consultation in the background. You know, so nice. if you started on a five day plan, we can always upgrade you to a six day plan with less meals or more meals. You know, or a seven day plan, and that's going to be very easy to do with the new website. And did I see? Did I, I don't know. I hope I'm, I hope I've seen this. I see. I think I've seen it pop up recently in your Instagram or somewhere. Something to do with lunches. Yes. Did you do something that recently? Or? Yeah, we just actually launched that this week. Would you believe? Uh, okay. It was a big thing for Good. offices in Galway. A lot of people reaching out to us for five day lunch plan slash dinner plan. You know, uh, a lot of those workers would have a spouse that would probably cook at home, and not that it's like you know, it, it's it's not that it's ignorant that I'm not going to eat my wife's meals. You know, because I'm on meal prep, but it's a good thing to come home and you know talk to your wife and sit down and have dinner with her every evening and have your meal prep for lunch you know a lot of still stay on track nice. yeah a lot of big companies get on to us as well about um, getting lunches just for their employees because you know it is it's a massive stigma now that people are going out to get the wrong foods mm. and then an hour after lunch they're falling asleep they're crashing the desk, so. Burger King for lunch yeah they're crashing so even even a roll there and, and a can of can coke you're, you know you're spiking your insulin and then you're just having a massive crash after it so we're kind of Try to keep it a balanced launch for people, just so they're at their optimum performance as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Healthy body, healthy mind, and like, even if you take price into consideration, some people would say, "Oh, geez, that's awful expensive." But let's go back to the chicken roll and the bottle of coke. You're looking at about six, seven euro. Yeah. Uh, one of our meals comes in at around six euro fifty. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, so. it's just they don't they don't people don't realize like when they when they see the bigger picture with it like exactly if you yeah. add up all the stuff you eat a day like if, mm-hmm. if somebody eats out every day oh it's crazy money so it's the same thing like yeah it's crazy money and you're probably spending more because you're gonna you're gonna pick up a coffee here or there you probably have exactly. two or three a day and like ultimately you're benefiting from the service or if you're not using like if you're not following meal prep if you're not like if you're just laxy daisy with your diet and you're eating rolls and whatnot through through lunch it's gonna it's going to affect your life. You know what I mean? It's going to affect your, your confidence. It could affect your relationship. Mm. It, it affects your work because you're drowsy, as you said. You come yeah, back to you're, work. You're, you're tired. You know? You're having a crash. Yeah. You know, like. 
Yeah, we've all we've all had to crash after a burger, you know. Yeah, do you know, absolutely. Or even, you know, you go out there for a cheap meal, or even if you go out and just, it's, a, it's a Friday, you're not feeling great about yourself. You have something bad, mm. and you just feel awful yeah. after. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's so good at the time. Yeah. Straight away, you're just like, why did I just do that? Yeah. An hour later, you're falling asleep, and you're just you're not in the right place, of mind. So, uh, it is all just about balance, really, mm-hmm. and making the right choices. Yeah, of course. But the expense, the expense thing, like if I understand if somebody was really, really tight in cash and they couldn't afford it, of that's course. fair enough. But if sure. somebody is already spending a ton of money yeah. throughout the week Absolutely. on chicken rolls and bottles of Luxade and Coke mm-hmm. and potatoes, do you know what? But you must see that as well. Like when you're training people and you give people a, like a diet plan to, to go by mm. and we the go, results aren't coming soon. in. They're training, but the results are coming in. You know it's 70% diet at the end of the day. So this oh, yeah. guy is falling off the wagon. So it's... It's more of a commitment to yourself to take that step to say, okay, I'm actually going to transform myself and I want to feel better, I want to look better. And it's, 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 the customer has to commit to it. Like we were talking about people just jumping on for a week and saying, ah, that didn't work for me. But that's, yeah. that's, not, the, that's not the customer that's actually going to change their, their mm. physical state and their mental state. You know, the customer that we want is the customer that's ready to commit to get on that journey and we want to help them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point in buying a fat plan and drinking four glasses of wine and eating like Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Off, so. exactly. No, brilliant, lads. And best place to find you, website, Instagram? Probably, yeah. Any social media platform, very active. We've, we're have we on it every single day. But I would advise if it was in in relation to, like, even if you wanted to have a quick consultation call, uh, drop us an email to info.cleancomillions.e. Either myself or Connor will get on to you and we can advise you for the best plan to suit you. You know, everyone has different goals, uh, different targets. And we can definitely help you. Don't be afraid to reach out. You know, um, all we're here is just to help. It's a helping hand. And by all means, if, you, if, you, if we can help you for three or four weeks, and you can go on and do it yourself, we'd love to help you for the starting point. You know, brilliant, brilliant. I look up all those uh, things in the show notes anyway. Um, but Connor, I mentioned to you the word competition. Yes. We're going to do something, but I don't. We haven't even talked about it yet, so we might talk about it after. Oh, right. right. I thought you meant our competition, in Ireland. I was yeah. going to say it's non-existent. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. yeah. So, um, <laughs> look at lads. Thanks very much for coming on, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Lovely. Cheers, thanks, David. Commander. Perfect. Thanks. thanks. So guys, that was Connor and Michal there from Clean Cut Meals. And like we mentioned just there at the very, very end, we're going to run a giveaway in line with this podcast episode. So obviously, depending on whatever you listen to, you might have missed it because we're going to leave this open for a week. And some huge prizes up for grabs where it's all going to be explained over on our Instagram channels, both on Clean Cut Meals and on the Doc Fitness page. So, so all the details for that will be in the show notes page. So it's Doc Fitness Online forward slash episode 19 but if you want to find out what that's all about and what prize you can win that will be launching friday the 6th of july over on my instagram page which is at the doc fitness other than that guys a massive thank you for tuning in again and if you haven't left a review for this podcast yet and if you find that you do take away a lot of value from it i would appreciate if you could head over to itunes or if you listen to this in some android platform like stitcher to leave a review for me there i'll be looking to get this podcast up on spotify soon as well and um that's about it for now as i said all the show notes for this episode will be over on doc fitness online forward slash episode 19 and we'll chat to you next time Bye bye